Mike Lasker's career has included Watchmen, Edge of Tomorrow, the Angry Birds movie, and the Mitchells versus the Machines. And he's here to talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Just an amazing, amazing film. You've worked with, uh, similar to some of our other panels, you've worked with Phil Lord and Chris Miller a lot. And I, and obviously their f- projects have such a specific tone. And I was wondering, how does that affect you from a visual effects standpoint? Yeah. So um, like you said, I've worked with Chris and Phil, you know, back with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and, and then the sequel and then Into the Spider-Verse and then Mitchell's. And, you know, one thing that they're really good at is pushing boundaries. You know, with the first uh, Into the Spider-Verse, we kind of had to reinvent how we made animated films. And, you know, up to that point, you'd sort of rely on the same principles, you know, how you render hair and skin and eyes and the environment. And when we did that, we really kind of broke out of all of our techniques. And we had to invent every aspect of filmmaking, which, you know, you kind of come to rely on it. And then when you can't, you're kind of like, oh God, you know, what am I going to do? And then you sort of reinvent it and get used to those challenges. So working with them, you know, they're always like, why are we going to do it if we're not going to go all the way? And if you kind of inch your way forward, you know, it takes a while to get there. And they're good at sort of having you push beyond, beyond what you thought you could do. They're very creative. And that's one thing I've learned with these, these movies, with these really interesting looks, is it's better to kind of overshoot and then pull back. Hmm. And uh, and that's really what it with the first one. And then with Mitchell's machines, Mitchell's versus the machines, we kind of took a different route of, of coming up with a look that was different. And then with Across the Spider-Verse, it was like that times 10, you know, all these different worlds, all these different looks. And what's really great is a lot of our artists in our studio are used to doing this now. So we kind of, we like the challenge. We like the hurdles. And that was what was so much fun about doing these three movies in a row. It's, It's created this culture of just tearing down walls, figuring out how to fix, you know, or, or come up with solutions to things that seem impossible. Um, so if anything, working with them has sort of gotten us into this mode of, of creating images that no one's ever seen before and creating tools that no one's ever used before. It's incredible. Like you said, this movie is so, ma- it's, it's so massive. I was rewatching it again uh, over the weekend and it's just like, I cannot believe how much is going like every, every, t- everywhere you look in every frame, it feels like there's a thousand different things to notice. And like, I like how do you like you were just saying like where do you start I mean like how do you even like <laughs> where do you even wrap your head around like some of the stuff you have to do yeah there is a lot going on in this movie you know it's 3,000 shots of in every shot every frame we really wanted to be treated as a painting so when we started development we knew about half the movie was going to be in Miles's world or 1610 which we had done in the first movie and when we, we we started it up, I wanted to sort of take the best of what we did on the first one and make that the baseline. So I wanted us to evolve the look, make it better. So Miles's world, you know, he was older, um, you know, about uh, 18 months have passed. So it was sort of like we getting back to that. And then we've got five other universes to figure out. And uh, the directorial team and Chris and Phil were so great at giving us references. So In order to sort of even start, we'd start with uh, artist references, references for the type of medium they wanted to use. Because all of the looks, we sort of collaborated and figured out together. It's not like you start and like, this is the look for for Gwen's world. This is the look for 2099. We know kind of what the aspirations are. And then we take the reference and we just start developing, start working with them and just try to push it into a realm that no one's thought of. And that's what's so much fun is you start with kind of what the aspirations are, what the reference is, and then we we start with our team and our development and innovation, and you create this look that's sort of no one, you know, there's what you want it to look like, and then there's sort of what's beyond that and what everyone working together creates. So there was a lot of just trying things out, experimenting, coming up with new tools to paint, uh, we're always trying to make things not look rendered. We're always trying to make it look like it's not made by the computer, which is tough. Um, you know, we're flying through India, and it's in a, which is a dense city. And as soon as you see the parallax of buildings in 3D, you're like, no, we don't want that. So we have to constantly police that thing. But honestly, it was so much fun. And if you're an artist, and we 
get more and more um, artists joining our, these productions that are have fine art backgrounds and love painting. They love line work. They love comic art. So you kind of feed off that. And to circle back to your question, you know, in order for every frame, for every shot to have so much artistry in that, you have to leverage off of the artistic talents of the thousand artists that are on the show. And I always say, if you have a great idea, it's going to get in there because everyone brings their knowledge and experience to it. And it was like that for the first movie. Um, you really just have to kind of channel everyone's artistry. And that's yeah. really the secret to it. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, it's so, so great. You mentioned like all the different worlds. Obviously the movie starts with like the spider Gwen, like basically like a pro prologue, maybe like 20 minutes or so of, of that. I love that sequence so much. I think it's like, I rewatch it just independently of the movie. I think it's like, so, so well thought out. Everything about it is great. I guess like knowing that was going to be the opening of the film and that's a new world that we haven't really seen. Like you were saying, like, kind of like, I guess, how did you guys, or what, what was like the biggest challenge in that? Or how did you kind of like approach that uh, opening like sequence? Well, Gwen's world was the biggest challenge and it was the first new world we had to develop. And we only caught a quick glimpse of it in Into the Spider-Verse. And we we had these brand new tools and we, we it was like maybe 10 shots, 12 shots at most in the first film. So we knew going into this one, it was the first 25 minutes of the movie. Plus you go back to it later. So we had to create tools and techniques that you could live in this world for that long and what really made it tough was it had to look like a painting it had to have it had to be brushed you had to paint brushes coming off of edges we had to have line work we built a new line tool we built tools where we could fill up scenes with millions of brush strokes tools where we could paint along edges so you're in that guggenheim and all those circular floors you had to paint brush strokes along the form um and on top of that Every since it was watercolor, and that was really the the look of the world was wet on wet medium, overly overall watercolor. But depending on the sequence, there were more graphic elements. Gwen swinging out of her apartment, you get ele uh, looks where you use friskets, where it just goes to white, and there are hard edges uh, because her world is like a mood ring. It's whatever her emotion is. Sometimes it's very abstract. Sometimes it's very pointed. So you've got the the watery brush strokes, you've got dripping paint in every single shot of her world, whether it's played up for emotion purposes or subtle. So brush strokes, dripping paint, line work. And then to top it all off, every shot in her world looks completely different than the one before and the one after. And typically when you light a CG animated movie, you know, you can create a light rig, you know, you can run out your shots, you can optimize but every shot had a lighting key. Every shot had an emotion. Shadows are going different ways. Colors are changing. So it was like, that was honestly probably the biggest challenge. And then they all have to play together. So the very first sequence we did in Gwen's World was the Guggenheim. And the end of the Guggenheim sequence is that very emotional interchange between Gwen and her dad. And as things get heated, paint starts to drip. The background starts to dissolve. You get into really abstract backgrounds and we had to do that whole sequence twice because we kind of did it and we watched it and we're like okay that that doesn't quite work that doesn't quite work so we went back and we sort of honed it um because i'm you know for this type of thing you have to watch it play so um but i'm really thrilled you asked about gwen's world because everything we learned and everything we built for that we used for the rest of the production all of that innovation yeah, that's amazing. We have to wrap up, but I just quickly, I guess, if you could do it, it was I, in 2099, we get to see all the different Spider-Men. Obviously, there's so, so many. And I guess, did you have a favorite or one that you were like, so like, that was like, uh, what was your favorite one? I guess that's in there. You know, it's funny. You got to love the T-Rex. You've got to love Spider-Cat. Um, Anya is a great character. She's in one shot. And she has all this armor come on when they see Miles. Uh, we built an entirely new crowd system just for spider characters where they can have different proportions and different logos and different colors, but there are so many to choose from, but spider cat's pretty great. Um, crowd favorite. Yeah. That was my, one of my, honestly, my, I think my daughter's favorite too. And she also loved, loved the T-Rex. Uh, Mike Lasker, uh, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Again, feel like we talk about this forever, but it was amazing VFX work. Thank you so much. <laughs>